Hello, everybody. Hello. We are live. Make sure that everybody can hear me. Hello. Hello, Bella. Hello, Simon. Oh, this is always fun today. Will be great as I uh, would expect. Hello, Philip. Oh, hello. <laughs> Oh, nice of you to drop in. Yes, hello. Look what's above my head. Can you see that picture? That is Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca. And I just found it in our, in our uh, vault. Collection. Yeah, and he signed it to me. Since, yeah, I'm going to take you over there. So yeah, let me see this. Uh, signed it to both of us, actually. So there, oh, there's a glare. See if you could see that. Yes, we, it, it is backwards for Instagram. Okay, so it's, it says, to Phil and Monica with love and laughter, Sid Caesar. And if, if, you're, if our viewers haven't seen this yet, uh, the, the, your show of shows, I recommend it because it's really one of the funniest things that's ever been on television. Yes, and it's, uh, I think, because... And I'm counting this. <laughs> We're not quite at television level yet. It's like um, television. It is like, no, it is exactly. It's like it's early like television. Hi from Brazil. Look at the people. Love you, Mr. Rosenthal. You're such a cute person. Tell my wife. Yeah. And when you say to both of us, it's to you and your wife, that picture, not, not to me and you. It, it sounded like, yeah, uh, the imaging Koga. And I think, Phil, you knew, because we're going to talk about a lot today, but you knew Carl Reiner very well, who wrote on your show of shows. I and love him. He was beautiful. Just a lovely, lovely man, in addition to being an absolute idol. Yes. Hello, fr hello, Belgium. Oh, yeah. got to get there. You wow. haven't? There's so much. Have you been? I have been to Belgium, yes. Oh, I was there once. I was. I was in Brussels <laughs> once. Yes. Long time ago. Yes. Hello. Uh, hello, Denmark. Hello, uh, Maui. So the good thing about this, Phil, is we can interrupt by calling out names. The bad thing is we interrupt by calling out names. So I think we own it that we, yeah. hello, hello France, loved the new season. So hi from Michigan, snowing here. I think it's a, it's a very crisp 85 degrees in Los Angeles where Phil and I are. Hello Brazil, hello Coney Island, which is like Brazil awesome. North, yeah. Now hello. I have a question for the people tuning in. Have you already seen the new season which came out Friday? Yeah, who has watched? Season four for just the Raymond people that don't. Season four of Somebody Feed Phil on Netflix. Who has, let's see some heart if you guys have watched it. Hello, Austin. Hello, wow. Providence, Rhode Island. Pouring rain on Long Island. What's new? Westwood Village. That's mm, not that far. Uh, people have watched if they've watched all of them already. And if they, if they have, I want to know what their favorite was. And I want them to tell me what they really don't like about me. Hi. By the way, it's something I want to talk about later, Philip, is when you put how yourself... How unlikable I am. Yes, how unlikely you are. When you put yourself out there. But I want to keep saying hi to some people. Who has watched more than one episode of Somebody Feed Phil? It just came out on Friday, besides Phil. Yes, Nashville has binged all of them. And did you have a favorite? Uh, it's Morrison.bri. Uh, I, I laugh, Philip, because a lot of people don't have their name, which is normal. But I have to, there's some funny names. So what did you like of season four for those of you that watched it? All of them in Ireland. Great. Favorite was Rio, Philip. Not a uh, uh, Rio is, have you ever been there, by the way? I have never been to Rio. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if you've seen that episode yet, but wow, we wow. It is spectacular in every way. Okay. Really. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't mean okay to you. I mean... Uh, yeah. I love the reunion for Peter Boyle's charity. We're going to talk about that. Nice. Uh, come to Tbilisi, Georgia. I am your host waiting for you. Okay. Now, this, Very Phil, cool. this, is, uh, this is a point of trivia that only you and I, maybe Ray, uh, definitely Raymond. Ray was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire 20 years ago. Yes. And he lost on the question, what is the capital of Georgia? Oh. And so he is on Celebrity Millionaire coming up, I think, or maybe it just yes. aired, I don't know. But the answer was Tbilisi. So where was critique of foodie then? 
Could have helped Raymond out. Okay. Uh, only one left to watch. Kathy. Kathy. Only one left to watch. Did, did you have a favorite of any of those? Kathy. With the Oregon. Yes, icon. Mississippi Delta was my favorite. Very special show. Because I... I have you been to the Mississippi Delta? Have you been to Memphis have... and south of there? Yes. I was expecting, I don't know, deliverance. You know, I was expecting something horrible to happen to me. And I expect, honestly, the way, the way sometimes the deep south is depicted as, as racist and terrible. And it was the opposite. <laughs> yeah. The opposite. I, I think they don't get a fair shake. Warmer and friendlier and, and beautiful. And the food was just gummy crazy. Yeah. Don't Can't don't like that every day, but wow. Yes. Wow. Laura uh, Sassonis is saying hi from Venice, Italy. She lives in Venice, Italy, my friend. If you saw that show. What a well, nice great, that's great. And Phil. I'm, yeah. Sorry. My favorite was Singapore. Somebody's writing that. Ah, nice. Jim Martin or J.M. Martin, I'm making an assumption there. My husband and I love watching Feed Phil. The filming is beautiful and makes you feel transported to a different place. Well, that wasn't your goal, Phil, to make people feel transported and enjoy themselves. No, uh, <laughs> I'm only here for because they feed me uh, 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 food. That's yes. Me. Rio is beautiful, but loved his dad. Okay, great, great. Enjoy the New York part. Great. My dad is 94, and he can't. He, he can't remember what he had for breakfast, but he can remember every joke ever made in the Catskills <laughs> from so, some old Jewish man. And he's got it all up. He's got every joke. He's like, a, he's amazing. <laughs> so, Phil, just because we have an international office uh, yeah. audience and yeah. someone in Rio right now and maybe in Tbilisi goes, what are the Catskills? So the, the Catskills is an area that, uh, there was a lot of old school for America entertainment. And so uh, w we can call it the Borscht Belt, which was, it was vaudeville type jokes for those of you guys that are in uh, uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, and so it's old kind of jokes that make you groan. And Phil's father remembers all of the groaners. And so that's what, yeah, that's <laughs> great what ones. I have to say, some of them really make me laugh still. Yes. Uh, Venice is my favorite. Hawaii is my favorite. San Francisco is my favorite. This is how you know it's going well when people have different favorites, right? Yes. Phil dancing in Rio was one of the best moments ever with uh, one, two, three, four, five, eleven, seven hearts. I'm going to round up. You know why? I don't know why. I'm a fantastic dancer, it turns out. I, you know, uh, I've, I've, oops, sorry, I've talked to your daughter Lily and she does not agree. My daughter, Lily, uh, jumped off the roof when she saw her father <laughs> dancing on television. By the way. She's like, I can't anymore. Goodbye, everybody. For, for people that don't uh, follow your career like you do, you did make a guest appearance on uh, 30 Rock. And I believe you danced in a silly way during that, which also said. silly way? This was not like Nijinsky was on the show. I'm a fantastic <laughs> dancer. Can't, isn't it obvious? Isn't it the... <laughs> I'm yes, gonna, I'm gonna have a contest. I think. Okay. This is my next contest. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll somebody soon, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I think the contest should be called. So you think you can dance better than Phil? And oh. We'll see you're dancing, people. And oh wow. Some kind of props. Yeah. This seems like a very harsh challenge to the world. Uh, and yes. I cannot. I've already put myself out there. <laughs> I've already humiliated myself. In, in, in the biggest way possible, right? On Netflix, which is yes. a country on the earth, and be dancing like an idiot. And so now it's your turn, everybody. Let's see. Yes, your, good. Don't do it yet. Wait for the contest so it's like official. Official, yeah, yeah. You, 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 and whoever is the best dancer, we're going to do something. And Phil, we don't want any scandals surrounding the Dance Better Than Phil contest. So please yeah. make sure, people, we don't want that to bring us down. Now, one of my all-time favorites here. Scandal. What are you thinking? What's uh, the scandal? Well, well, you said don't turn in your, your submissions now because people want to get an early start of submitting oh, yes, their yes, dance don't. videos. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You can practice Pete, for, for our nice Instagram Live viewers today. Yes. We're giving them a, maybe a little advance, like a little, right? So that when the contest is announced, you've already practiced. You might yeah. have an edge on the other people who ha can't dance at all. Right, they turn to their spouse and say, I, I got this. I've been practicing for two months and Phil is terrible. Um, that would be Lily. Uh, 
One of my all-time favorite moments was when the sweet old lady was flirting with you in the Delta. Priceless. Oh, yes. That's Aunt Flo. Absolutely gorgeous lady. 90-something. And we live together now. Flo, <laughs> can I have some of my pork chops? Nice. Uh, speaking of that, you are so genuine, Phil. Love your smile. Please tell Monica, Emery Board says hello. Oh. Oh. So there, just, that, I think that woman just wanted to remind you that you are married and that you can't settle down with the woman from the Delta. Um, so, <laughs> Phil, yeah, I want- to get married more than once. I've seen it. Some of them become president. Oh, yeah. In Hollywood, especially, too. Yeah. Hello, hello, Brazil. Hello. Okay, so, Phil, now that we've greeted a lot of people, including Yuba City, California. Yeah. One of the, I'm going to answer, I want to show, I want to bring it into Ebro's Raymond for a second. Yeah. Uh, because these are, these are dedicated fans. Now, I, and so one of the questions was, and I'm looking for it on my phone, because I'm going to hold up the picture real quickly. So one of the, pic, one of the questions that happens all the time, Philip, yeah. is here. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, so the question is, why are there so many people around Phil? And it's a legitimate question, and I'm going to take them through it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to swipe right. There's, there's another angle. It's backwards, but if people... It goes, uh, yeah, it's a panorama, so you Right. Okay, uh, so I can I give you my fast answer? Why there's so many people around me during yes. notes, giving notes on the uh, show? Sure, they all want to be in show business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that helps people zero. That is called <laughs> comedy for the sake of comedy. So well, right, that's part of what we do. Look, Monica gave me a haircut today with the Clippers, and maybe got a little too close. Can you see? You could see a little extra fill. Yeah, there. You know, I saw that scene in Full Metal Jacket, and it's very similar haircut. That's exactly haircut. what she does. Yes. Hel yeah. Hello. Very yes. little hair goes into this. Uh, <laughs> no, I wonder, is she looking at you when she's doing that, or she's just watching TV? Or she's on the phone. Yeah. So here's, hello, Wendell Poons, one of my favorite names. So now, Philip, I'm yes. going to help these people out Please, because, you okay. You tell them. So now, there's Phil, okay, and next to him is Aaron Shore, and on the other side of him is Lou Schneider. Then there's uh, Gary Halverson, a director. Then we see Monica's, the back of Monica's head. Then we see Jonathan uh, Buss, Mike Royce, Jeremy Stevens, Tucker Cawley. And then in the second row, we see the writer's assistant. So let me just give them the quickest answer, which is this. When you're filming the live show, it's kind of like a pit stop after the first take. So everybody rushes in, Phil gives his notes, and you want to get going again as quickly as possible because the show is filmed in front of a live audience. So if Phil took his sweet time in the first scene and every scene after, all of a sudden the audience is there for seven hours and the audience gets tired, the actors get tired. So the reason you see so many people gather there is all of the writers are listening to what Phil is saying. And if they have any notes that Phil missed, they say to Phil, oh, I thought this. Phil doesn't have time to go back to the monitor and say, and, and, and someone goes, uh, Phil, did you tell Patty that I thought she looked, I, I told her that, uh, did you tell, so we are listening intently so that we don't say something to Phil and he goes, I already told him that, didn't you listen? And so there's an intense moment of let's get in, let's get out. And the ripple effect is the live audience feeds the energy to the actors. So that's why you see so many people gathered around now. In this shot, because it's the finale, there's a few more people than normal. There's three people that are filming a documentary that ended up becoming The Last Laugh. But that's the short kind of, that's why it seems like, whoa, a lot of people who seem to be there for what reason? So, all right, hello from Brazil. Oh, hello, Germany. Where in Germany are you? Now, you haven't gone to Germany yet, Philip. No, but you know, both my parents are from Germany. Okay, I I'm love that. First generation American. I'm the first one in my family to be born in America. I love that. Okay. Yeah. So greetings from Germany, somewhere in Germany. Wo bist du jetzt in Deutschland? Oh, I, can't, I can't wait to get to Berlin. I know it's a world-class, really great art center of the world, right? Yes. And I hear the food is amazing and the, the people are great. And I can't wait to go. There's, you know, I haven't scratched the surface, really. Yes. I've done, how many have I done? 22 on Netflix, six before that, so 28 total. There's uh, 190 countries. 
And yes. look who's in those countries. I want to see everything. Yes. I tell people when they say they're not really interested in travel. I'm like, wait, what if somebody gave you a house? Let's say somebody gave you a house. Would you stay in one room of the house? <laughs> you want to see the whole house. Yes. So we live in, we were given the world. Don't we yes. want to see the world? And, and I think some of the, I'm just trying to scroll through the comments as they come yeah. in. Uh, hello, Kendi. Yeah, uh, so someone just said, thank you for paying so much respect to other cultures and introducing us to other cultures, right? <clears throat> which I what? think, yeah, sorry, which, which I think if anybody's watched the show, so there's, I'm assuming there's some people on here who haven't seen it yet. Go to Netflix, somebody feed Phil. You have four years to catch up on. You will want to, you will want to cancel uh, your Monday and Tuesday to watch them all. But it's but, only five or six episodes per season, so it's not like a, a ton. Yeah, you're, you're making it sound like it's not that much work, people. I'm not, not, you have to catch up with every Raymond episode. <laughs> which, would be, which would take you uh, quite a while. So now, here's a question, Phil. Yeah. What, someone asked on Raymond, there was a rubber chicken put that, was there ever a rubber chicken? Yes, yes. Do you, re do you remember why, and were you upset yes. about that, or was that? Yes, because... Yes. I, we established early on the name of my production company was Where's Lunch? And the reason it was called Where's Lunch is because, very simply, it was our main preoccupation as writers in the writer's room. Where's lunch? Where are we ordering from? And then after we order, why isn't it here already? Right? <laughs> so that was, I thought, a perfect. And at the end of every episode, of, I think it became the first changing logo on TV. Though where every episode would have a different logo. So you'd see the where's lunch uh, a placemat on a table in a restaurant and then a different plate of food. This is, right? Yes. How many years ago? Tw almost 25 years ago now. Correct. I'm already thinking of the food. A different plate of food in the shop would come in for the last second or two. And I, after establishing it myself, I asked one of our line producers, so I wanted uh, food, real food, every week, something else. And somebody thought they were funny and put in a rubber chicken, and I didn't check it. <laughs> so here's the lesson. Yeah. Yes. You have to check everything. <laughs> so Everything, every, no matter how small a detail, you have to check it. Otherwise, that's now forever. And 25 years later, somebody's asking me on this Pakakta Instagram, <laughs> Why is there a rubber chicken on the thing? You stink. You must yep. be a hack to put a rubber chicken on your show. That's now, right. You're right. I am a hack. <laughs> so I don't think people, first of all, for someone just said, can you come visit Chechnya? For people that are in Chechnya right now, a hack is a bad comedian who does stuff that's very obvious and bad. Okay? So, yes, yeah, some of the people from Brazil, if you don't know that term. I don't know that people watching it didn't enjoy the rubber chicken. I'm not defending the rubber chicken. I'm saying your taste is please no rubber chicken. And, and, and I asked for one thing, <clears throat> real food. Yes. And but so it should be real, a real thing. Why? And, Just because I like that. And a rubber chicken is a, a joke on a on joke. top of a joke. Yep. Right? And so, uh, so who wants it? We, I, I asked for one thing, which is at the, on the last episode, who knows what happened on the last episode what came down on the placement where's lunch let's see who if somebody can uh, by the way these people know the broadcast show phil better than you better than me better oh, than anybody tell me then yes uh somebody some yes okay hello istanbul hello, hello I gotta get there i can't wait to go to istanbul uh hello yeah go some people want you to scotland philip yeah um, edinburgh love it uh and if Dance we, first, phil i'm not your monkey <laughs> I um, you on the show. You can see me dancing like an idiot. Okay, great. So if, she got it. Hildy sixteen got it. Right, and also saved joy fully. Got a few people got it. Great, great, great. Proud you, of you. Yes, great. So now, oh look at the hello Panama. This is great, Phil. You have you have That's made it around. Great. I've been to Amsterdam in my life. I can't wait to go back. That should be an episode. Zurich, yes, I gotta get to Switzerland. 
Schweiz, Zurich, they actually, great. They actually asked. Uh, I heard that they would like me to come, so I'm I'm excited to go. Well, listen, the world the world's got to open up, people, right? And yes. Netflix has to want more shows. I don't know if they do. They so, always want new things. You have to write to them and say, "Hey, we please. like this. Don't uh, be so cavalier in uh, moving <laughs> on to the next thing." Yes, Phil. I think since you brought that up, I've talked about this with everybody uh, who's been on about the the. The, from the outside, it just seems like we'll do another season, Phil, because we like it so much. But there oh, are. I need to go. I yes, want to go. I want to but do it. There are so many. I talked about this with Brad and, and you know, uh, uh, Tucker and Elizabeth Herring, who's been on a bunch of shows. It's Love very, that. very, 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 very hard to get a show on the air. And it's just as hard to get a pickup for the next season. So for those of you watching who go, well, Phil, just, I mean, just do the other season. Netflix has to say yes. And Netflix doesn't necessarily want to say yes because they're looking at uh, an algorithm of all the stuff that you're not factoring in. The people at home are going, I love it, Phil. You're so many more plays. You need at least 10 more seasons, which you go, okay, great. Netflix might say, uh, okay, we're running the analytics. If Phil does another season and he goes to Zurich and Scotland, does it help us? I don't think so. I, I don't think anyone else. Uh, nope. Okay. They, goodbye. They've said already, they've said to me, even before this season, they said, we actually have enough. We don't need more. Right. Because that little poster of somebody feed Phil, that's there forever. Yes. And you can see those episodes. So when you turn on Netflix and see their giant array of shows and movies, their huge library, we're going to be there forever. Correct. And that poster, you don't know if there's one episode behind that poster or a thousand. It's the same poster for everybody. Yes. And the way they get new viewers is by having new posters. Yes. Right? So that, so that you, when every time you turn it on and go, wow, look at all the shows I haven't seen yet. Yes. So that, someone... They only renew 5% of their existing shows. So we're very lucky to have made it to season four already. Now, I, would I like to do more? Yes, I want to do it the rest of my life because it's a good gig. I don't have to tell you. It's very nice for me to do. I love it more than anything in my life. I love, uh, okay, my family, but I love doing this show. And I yeah. love the connection to you guys, to the people. Yes. I love it. I love it. So, so don't ask me, do I want to do more? Tell them. So, they, so, Phil, a lot of nice people here watching saying, does it help if we watch all of the episodes? I don't know if it does, but it doesn't hurt to watch all the episodes. And then someone said, well, Phil, can't you just do another episode even if Netflix doesn't want it? Well, uh, I, I can tell you that I will. Uh, somebody just said, hi, Tom. Tell Phil to stop talking. Oh, that's Monica in the other room. Yeah. That's that Monica in the other room. <laughs> well, by the way, the Phil, internet. yeah, off of that comment, I want to talk about this just real briefly. Yeah. For people watching especially, and that comment is perfect. When you go public, when you put yourself out there, you become this entity that's not a human being in certain ways. And I say it that way because I'm from New Jersey. But human beings, however you say it, you have to be able to have thick skin. Because as, and I'm talking about, let's just say, everybody was Raymond. There was a critic that did not like our show. And I forget, I think he was USA Today or something. He just hated the show. And I think for you, you have to do what you want to do because everybody's going to hate you at some point. Some, sorry, somebody's going to hate you at some point. And Ray never did social media. And he would, he would look on YouTube and he'd go, look at these comments. Look how ugly I am. Look how bad I am. Look how much they hate me. Look how much I ruined this thing. He goes, okay, I've had enough. You know, he'll read five comments and they're all terrible. And so for you, now you're, before you were, behind, you were behind the camera on Everest Raymond, nobody saw you. Nobody knows who you are. Somebody criticizes the show. Yeah, it hurts you. But nobody goes, boy, Phil Rosenthal is terrible. I hate his dancing. So how do you, like when you're reading that, just for example, that comment comes through because... Almost everybody, every, almost every time I go on, somebody says, please stop talking. And so uh, how do you deal with that as you see the mostly good, but some really hurtful, angry comments coming in? And I'm not talking about from Monica or Lily. 99.9% uh, .9 of 
all my interactions on the internet and the things I read are so nice beyond my wildest dreams. And yet that one guy today who told me to stop talking yes. really hurts my feelings. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> you know, here's the thing. Seriously, we're, we're sensitive people, right? We're sensitive. Uh, that's what makes us uh, want to create stuff like, like write, a, write a, a sitcom or make a show or paint a painting, right? Or, or, or be a chef and make a, a, beautiful, a beautiful dish. My, right. brother, my brother is on and he says, that was me who said, stop talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, everybody, uh, could you flame Richard a little bit? I would love that. Um, uh, so so I, I, I think that that sensitivity, right? That makes you attuned to observing things in the world or creating something, right? You can't turn that off. You're, you're sensitive then. So when somebody insults you or says something brutal or cruel, maybe it hurts even more than a person who's not sensitive. Of course it does. Because yes. a person who's not sensitive does care. Yes. Uh, now, I'm, I'm half kidding because I, I have a very, very stupidly lucky life. And so that doesn't really bother me. <laughs> well, and I think well, I'm whoops, I'm agreeing uh, everything that you're saying. And I'm just yeah. I'm scanning through these things are saying you yeah. have such positive energy. How could somebody yes. not love his energy? We, I wrote a blog about Phil. How could you not love his energy? There ask are people. Richard. Ask Richard. <laughs> there are people. So I don't want to get too into psychology, but a lot of it, you ultimately you feel sorry for these people that have to go out of the way to yes. try and hurt your feelings. And so, so I tell I, that to my, my kids, let's say that they were bullied, right? When they were little, uh, I, I taught, give them advice that was given to me once. That person, do, would you want to be that person? That, you wake up in the morning and you get to be you. That yes. person has to get up and be him. Yes. Right? Yes. So you win. Even though they're giving you a hard time, you win. And, and even, even in other terms, it just is... For the person to wake up and go, I'm going to write a really angry thing about Phil Rosenthal on YouTube, whereas you, Phil Rosenthal, are like, okay, how can I, how can I make a show that people feel good about themselves? You don't get up and go, I'm going to write an angry thing about this guy. And so your I heart- There are angry people. We know them. We see them on TV. We see yes. that they're truly angry and, and you know, even have disdain for their own audience, right? We see sure. Sure. Uh, uh, so, Phil- I, I, I feel like the luckiest guy you're ever going to talk to. That's how I feel. And I think people, there are people, and I think because of the time we live in, if Van Gogh lived right now and he put up a picture every time he painted on Instagram and somebody kept, put down your paintbrushes, all right? You're, you're, you're not talented. Like, it's a time where everybody has a chance to chime in and you have to take the good with the bad because 20 years ago, you're not getting a comment from Sydney, Australia saying, please come down. You know, you're not getting a comment from Chesney going, Phil, please visit me, which is really, really good, which is, which, which is great. Somebody saying, Tom, I played with you on the Raymond softball team. Okay, that's great. How I'm, was he? I'm, was he any good? I don't remember. I don't you know remember. He wasn't on the Raymond softball team? Phil Rosenthal. <laughs> but you did bring I lunch be, a few times. I, I, so I would, I would come to the game. And I made sure that we had a food truck or a food cart there. And that's where I spent most of my time. <laughs> and Phil, we did have you run the bases once. You did go on as a pinch runner. I have videotape of it. Yeah. Greetings from Kurdistan. Is that? Yes. Um, uh, what position did you play, Joe? That's where, that's where we are. Okay. So Phil, along that line, someone just said, share a Jeremy Stevens story. And what I wanted to say is, because uh, people don't really know the the whole ins and outs of stuff. And we're seeing even this, even this Instagram, Everybody's Raymond 360, most people want to see the actors, right? They tolerate you on camera in the photos and they're getting to understand, oh, it's 130 people to make this show happen, not just the five or six cast members, okay? And so I think it's a really, really great um, uh, example of this teamwork environment. And so, even though we, you and I know the writers and we're so, you know, uh, uh, we spent so much time together from the outside, Jeremy Stevens was a writer who sadly just passed recently. But off of what we were just talking about, 
the positivity versus negativity. When you're a creative person and you're trying to sh start a show, the last thing you need is someone saying, I don't see it. I, I don't think this is going to work. And that's what you get from most executives because their job is to protect, okay, we don't want to make a terrible thing. So they're looking at the negative. They're looking at the, okay, how could this fail? Which is why you have testing. So just briefly, uh, tell about Jeremy Stevens and the pilot, when you wrote the pilot and what happened. Well, I met, I met Jeremy 30 years ago because I worked on a show as a writer for somebody else. And Jeremy was already there and he was a senior writer. You know, he was, because he, he's a little older than me and, and he had quite a career. He was a Broadway actor. He co-created The Electric Company on PBS. He uh, worked on SNL when Eddie Murphy was there and he did tons of sitcoms and movies. And so I was like, wow, look at this guy. He's pretty amazing. And we kind of hit it off right away and we became, you know, best friends. And, and the thing you just said it, the best thing about him and anyone who ever met him would say this is he's the most positive person in the world. And so I like that. And, and uh, when you write something, you're very vulnerable. Again, sensitive, right? I hope people like it. Oh no, what if they don't like it? And I wrote the pilot for Everybody Loves Raymond. And because I was already, had been friends with uh, uh, Jeremy for, for at least five or six years, I, uh, I thought I'm gonna send it to him first. Not because of is he more of an expert than other people, although he has a terrific mind and, and can really analyze something. That was secondary to me to get, you know, mm -hmm. useful criticism. I needed in my sensitive, vulnerable place in this thing that meant a lot to me, I needed kindness first. Please be gentle. <laughs> it's my first time. <laughs> and so I, I sent this to him and I waited and I waited. And, you know, that, that's a horrible feeling to wait to see if somebody likes it. You would yes. literally wait by the phone. Yes. If you're, if you're in show business, that's 90% of your life is waiting. Waiting by, by the phone. And the phone rings and I pick up. I say, hello. And this is what I hear. Before hello, before anything, I say, hello. I hear we're going to be on 10 years, <laughs> right? Yes. And I said, hi, Jeremy. I guess you like it. He goes, 10 years. And he went it on and on and on about how much he loved it. And of course, how do you not love a guy who starts with that? Yes. I don't even remember. He, I'm sure he had comments and criticism that helped, you know, the pilot that he would do. But uh, all I heard was that. And that's one of the sweetest sounds in the whole world and will be for me for as long as I live. Because when do you get that kind of absolute, beautiful, 100% pure affirmation? Right, right. And, and, and doing this creative endeavor, there's a big unknown. And so you're going on a leap of faith. So to have Jeremy behind you like that is awesome. And if people get a chance to watch Exporting Raymond, which is a great thing because... Yes. Phil's in it. It's him doing Russia. But the reason it's so good is we already know the show worked. We already know that the show was a huge success. And then when Phil goes there, they say it won't work and it's not good. So Phil already can say, well, I don't have as much doubt maybe when I wrote the pilot because I've already done it and I have a bucket of Emmys and I can't believe you're saying it. But that's the normal thing that you're up against. And so when you're artistic and you're sensitive, you're going, oh, my gosh, maybe they're right. Maybe they're right. Maybe it is terrible. Maybe I can't do this, you know? And so look how much resistance in Russia you get for something that we know works. Well, there we go. It, it, it was, it was a, a wild experience for me. You know, I was invited to a place where I thought I was in, an expert in something, <laughs> or the show I did for nine years. Yes. And I go to a land where nobody cares. Yes. They invited me. Yes. To come and help them. Yes. The movie is me trying to help them and then not uh, really wanting my help. And I think, Phil, for me, so people are asking where you can see that. Is that on Netflix now, Exporting Raymond? 
No. Is it back on Netflix? No. I think you have to go to Amazon or iTunes to see. Okay. Now. Oh, it may oh, go up you... again on Netflix or on a, another streamer or network even, but you know, these things, they, they come and go. Yes. Uh, you never know where it is, but if you swing by Phil's house in an hour, we can watch it together. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and just so uh, for just for people on Exporting Raymond, the reason, uh, if you don't know what Phil did watching the show, meaning you're at home, you watch a show. Oh, then I see the name Phil Rosenthal. Well, what did he have to do with it? I guess, I don't know. Did he write a check? Does he do something? No. So Phil was involved in every single aspect of the show from every decision. And when you see those pictures of him on stage, pretty much directing uh, every single episode. So when he goes to Russia, you have to keep that in mind. So to me, it's this, Phil. We see footage of you being the world's greatest animal trainer, and you've gotten these lions under control. Now you go to another place, and a guy goes in and gets ripped to shreds, and you're sitting there going, I think I could help you. And they're like, please, please, we have this handled. And the guy keeps going in, comes back covered with blood, and you're going, I really, please. And that's what you feel like when you're watching Exporting Raymond. You're watching this world expert. There is no one more expert on how to run Everest Raymond, and he's being told, A, it's terrible, and please stop talking. Um, all right, so here we go. A lot but wait, of but yes? wait, we have to say, getting back to Jeremy. Yes. After I left, I don't want to blow the end of the movie, but yes. they made the the pilot was successful enough, which was a shock to me, to get to get picked up to series. Now the series is running in Russia, and they need someone to supervise from America to to take them the rest of the way. So I. They asked if I would like to come back. No, I would not. But <laughs> maybe one of my other writers on Raymond could right. easily supervise because they know the show very well. And I thought the best person, disposition-wise, right? Yes, yes. Character-wise. Yes. For all the reasons we just talked about. Yes. Jeremy. Jeremy yes. went to Russia having never been out of America. Yes. Ever went there for seven years. Yes. And he made the adaptation of Everybody Loves Raymond in Russia. I think it's called the Veronins now. Yes. Right? The most successful adaptation of a show from another country anywhere on earth in history. Yes. I have a Guinness Book of World Records <laughs> medal. Oh, I did not because know. Because of Jeremy. Wow. Because he made it happen there. I wow. Couldn't I, I certainly couldn't do it. It was all him. I, I think you were on your edge at the end of that movie. I didn't see you going back for another week. So let alone seven years. Yes. Uh, sorry. I didn't, have the, I didn't have the temperament. He had the temperament. He was a world class ambassador, right? I'm, I'm now becoming an ambassador. But I'm being it, it's, it's different. All I'm doing is going and celebrating the culture. I'm not there to help anybody make a show. I'm not there for business reasons. I'm there to experience what's great about the place. You know, that, so, so yes, I'm, I'm an ambassador in some way, but that was a working situation and I wasn't very good at it. Well, you did a great job for no, knowing your, no, here, uh, this well, is the cop. But I'm not better than Jeremy. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, watching the Exporting Raymond, uh, I really recommend anyone that wants to get into show business to watch that. The, yeah. the whole thing I'm saying is you did a, better, uh, did a great job is because when you watch The Resistance, as someone who watched you being the head of the show, where nobody from wardrobe, if the idea that somebody from wardrobe would start yelling at you and giving you lip was like, oh, that, that, this is their last day. Not I, because Phil's a tyrant, but because you can't have that. You have to have cooperation. I watch it now. Uh, I watch it. I laugh. It's, it's a hysterical <laughs> situation. My family thinks it's the, you know, the funniest thing ever because of uh, how I suffer. Yes. <laughs> By the way, Phil, now um, a lot of shout outs to Richard. Yes. Um, why? Yes. Why is Richard getting things? Yes. Why? I don't I know. Didn't get anything. People seem to like Richard. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, sorry, some, a lot of people saying your show is so great at getting us through these hard times. Um, so, Bella, uh, dang, she keeps repeating, I hated the Russian version of Raymond's. Oh, Bella, where did you watch the Russian version of Raymond's? Would Bella be Russian? Be maybe Bella is, is Russian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, By the way, I loved uh, 
I loved actually being in Moscow, and the food was very good. In Moscow, yeah. I, yeah. Uh, Phil, I went to Moscow right before the, the wall fell, and it was yeah. very interesting time, which yes. we'll, talk, we'll talk about on the Russian version of this. Um, yes. Phil, very good Marco impersonation from the table read. Now, I want to I talk about the table read briefly. So there is a benefit for Peter Boyle for a fund for the International Multiple Myeloma Foundation that Peter Boyle's wife does. So for those of you that haven't watched it, I recommend you go to the IMF YouTube page and I'll post, I'll post after you're off, Phil, some, a couple of screen grabs from that. Yes. The table read is the beginning of the week for the production of the show. Right. And you were reading other characters and it was really the essence of the show, and you've said it before, but it's the show in its purest form. So people, if you haven't gone, it's your chance, when I post pictures of a table, it's your chance to watch that. And so Phil, just talk a little bit about what that was like for you just doing that table read. Uh, this was Lorraine Boyle's idea, Peter's uh, widow, uh, as a, to make a fundraiser that could be done on Zoom. And we, even though we're all friends and we see each other all the time, uh, Ray and Brad and Patty even, and, and I see my wife occasionally. And, and so we, we've never though done this. Hey, let's read those parts again from 20 years ago that of the scripts that we shot. And so we just did it with, I think without rehearsal, and we did it and it was very sweet. And it was, uh, you know, we laughed our heads off because I don't know, it, I guess I'm, I'm so happy that the scripts kind of hold up, but more importantly, yes, these are so fantastic. Yes. They're so, they can slip into it so easily still. Uh, and it didn't seem dated at all because we made sure that it wouldn't be dated. That was, that was, a, that was something we planned. Yes. But for it not to do te topical jokes so that it might live on in the future. So we're so happy that to have that. Can, can people still see it on YouTube right now? If they I, be I believe so. Somebody watching, if you've watched it recently, yes. Uh, a lot of hearts. So I think people can oh, still watch that. I have that a table. special guest. I have a special guest who might want to say hello. Hold on. Come in, special guest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it's, it looks like Amy from Everett's Raymond. It's, it is, and. Oh, uh, awesome. Uh, is this, so Tamara says, what is this Raymond show about? I've never heard of it. Now, I don't know, Tamara. I, Tamara, I don't know if that's a joke or a real question. I so, saw a little emoji after it tells me that it was a, it was a joke. But oh, look how joke. nice Monica looks, everybody. Say hi oh, to Monica. Yep. Yeah. Monica, are you filming something that you, your hair looks? Uh, uh... Actually, I did my Zumba this morning, trying to keep my, my, my soul calm and yes. about positivity to our universe. Yes. And I cut my husband's hair. With some anger. No, no. Very oh. okay. All With... joy and love. She All uses love. Uh, hedge clippers. <laughs> and so now I'm very clean, right? I, I'm, I... I smell good. Uh, I love it. I... I'll go Ch to Chow from Naples, Italy. We got I love Naples. Oh my God. Yeah. And I, we had the, the pizza. Come on. Yeah. And that amazing chapel, remember, with the with that with the statue that had the rope. Remember the beautiful, amazing carving. You wonder why some statues become so and some works of art become so famous. And then you go to Naples and you go into a little chapel and you see like one of the most spectacular carvings of marble that you've ever seen oh, it's a, or remember it was the this, christ that was the shrouded christ. The, so oh. that out of marble you could see Santa that Vini. it was a veil over a human face and and but it's all marble one piece of marble but it looked like there was a thin veil over the person you could see the fabric you could see the Stand. thing it in the marble like you could see like a, a what like what would alive. yes Amazing. What would we look up to find that image for the that's viewers who are left in the dark and go, hey, where is that thing? It's in Naples. I think if you look up the chapel in Naples, the veiled, the veiled Christ. Christ. Okay, I'm gonna the veiled Christ in Naples, everybody. Yes. Um, uh, can Phil and Monica be my parents, please? That is sure, not come over. <laughs> oh, no, <don't> <laughs> that is not written by. So people hey, want Lily, you. Lily, out. 
You, new person. <laughs> uh, people are one. Uh, yeah, just so much uh, uh, enjoyment of people just saying, visit El Paso, visit Puerto Rico, please. Visit Chechnya. Oh, so Bella's from Chechnya and she is Here's Russian. I, yes. We have 200 something people watching right now. And these are people from all over the so world. So lucky. Yes. German. <laughs> If you're, I, I'd like to go to either Germany or Scotland with you, Philip. If you're coming to Germany, I will make you the greatest Mürbeteig, I think. Mürbeteig. Yeah. Well, uh, that was my grandmother. Like Uma. It, it, I would it, say, uh, Uma, what is a Mürbeteig? And she would say, <laughs> it's a very nice Teig. <laughs> you know what? I was going to go grab her picture, but I have them all out for the Day of the Dead. Dios de los Oh. So we were, and relatives. we were, we're not Mexican and we celebrate anyway. We still nice. Yes. Nice. Uh, hello. Sorry. Hello. Uh, hello, Argentina. Hello, Ontario. Yeah, uh, Manchester. Right. A lot of England, by the way. The show, Monica, if you haven't yes. been watching, it, the show airs at like 9.05 a.m. in England. Raymond. Oh, wow. yeah, Raymond they, does. Raymond does. Watch them for breakfast there. I love yes. That. They watch it over breakfast there. So there's a lot of questions. Um, uh, yes. What is your favorite beer? That's an interesting question, Phil, that I've never heard asked of you or I, Monica. The best, the best beer I ever, the best glass of beer I ever had is actually in the show. Do you guys, can you guys guess? Let's see. Anybody wants to guess the favorite beer, Phil drank it on camera in Somebody Feed Phil. Um, I do believe I know it. I'm not going to answer. Let's see. A lot of people from Brazil, Philip. A lot of I love blows. Brazil, as you can see. I love Rio so much. It was so awesome. Yes. Hello, My New Hampshire. Lockdown dish. That's a good question. Uh, I'm going to say there's a pizza place down the street. That's at least once a week. There's a there's a, a Mexican place called Sonora Town in downtown L.A. For those of you who live in L.A., I recommend these chivy chungas. Not chivy chungas. Chivy with a V, they're small burritos with uh, either chicken or beef or, or I think there's a pork one, but they're like the, on the flour tortillas, it's one of the softest pillow-like things. It's the most comfort, comforty food. And in these times, people, don't we need just a little, oh. Sorry. <laughs> a little bit of comfort. Now, a lot, Phil, a lot of people are guessing Guinness. Now, I know you like Yes, Guinness. that's it. Very good, oh, people. Okay. It's that glass of Guinness from the main tap on the top of the entire Guinness factory. There's like a main line down into the, the purest. <laughs> you know when you're at the place and getting the fresh thing? Yes. Like a, like a bun right out of the oven. That's that Guinness. Yes. That, so it, There's flavor that you can't have any other way. All right, here comes a very special guest. Are you ready? By the way, a lot of people guess Guinness. I want to shout out to them. They knew it. Come here, Why is Lily on a leash? What 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 is Come here, puppy? Come here, come here, puppy. Come here. Come on. Well, okay. If he doesn't want to come to you, we can Uh-oh. We can go to him. This is the beauty of live broadcasting from a phone. Do we see him? Oh, We've wait, lost I'm picture. Way. How did that happen? Uh because you must have hit another uh app cuz we can hear you. Oh my God! Oh, the, what that, have I this done? This is for Grandpa. Yeah, you you just have to go back to your uh, Instagram app, app Philip, by by Proteus. But it's easier for me to read the comments though when you're not here. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, what did I hit? I just hit the side of the thing. So but love. I see the comments. I see the hearts. <laughs> I see you. I hear. <laughs> I can tell that I'm on. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Hello, everybody. All right. So I will, I'll try to be careful. Murray, where's Murray? There he yes, is. we will come to, we'll, Phil will go to Germany. Yes, good. Puppy Murray, there's Murray. Hello, Murray. Come here, Murray. Oh, he's a little camera shy. Yeah, he, 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 I think it might be Tom. Here, here. Oh, by the way, so this is an interesting thing, Philip. I hope it's not me. Hello, Murray, good to see you. After Borat, you should come to Kazakhstan and show everybody our real nation and food. Yes, because oh, I yes. know I know Borat is is not the real thing. <laughs> so, um, Murray, people say Murray should have his own Instagram. To which I say, Murray gets me a lot of followers. He works for me now. Yeah, you don't want to split off the Murray following. Uh, wow. Philip, 
Here's a question. Is Murray named after Murray the cop from The Odd Couple? That's one of the main inspirations, but there's lots of Murrays. There's Murray from uh, uh, Mary, Tyler. Mary Tyler Moore, right? Her best friend sat next to her at the place, Murray. Right. There's Murray's, Murray's Cheese Shop in New York, one of my oh. favorite places in the world. And I don't know, I just think there was a boy, Sostanza. I think in, in, in the restaurant Sorry. Sostanza in Florence, and it was a little kid, and he recognized me from the show or something like the show, and I asked, what's your name? He said, Murray. And I thought that was the cutest thing, a little kid named Murray. And I said to Monica right there, if we ever have another dog, I want to name him Murray. I oh. love that name. Look at that. Somebody said that Murray and Richard should have a shared Instagram together. No, no. Richard's not getting anywhere near my dog. Uh, I, I, think Mur I think Richard costs you viewers, too. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for finding that. She found the statue, uh, uh, the carving uh, uh, thing. I uh, forgot the church. Uh, yes. It, well, I have to scroll back to so many. Monica, it's so good to see you. I didn't know. I, I, I wanted you to come on and do a separate, uh, you know, a separate uh, little visit. But I love that you guys are together. <laughs> because, that? Oh, I yeah, yeah, of course. People want to come and talk to me? By the way, yes, I want... rather see you than me. They, Monica, they love you. They love you. I love you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing at these comments. Do you like tennis? Andy Murray. Uh, that's not the Murray. Yes. KTAC 406. More Richard. KTAC, were you dropped on your head? <laughs> oh, the Netherlands. Uh, f f uh, Philip, have you been to, uh, you've been to Amsterdam? I went to a wedding in Delft once. You, you, would, go to, you would go to Germany. Pro, wait, Produce for Life 7. Do you see what Produce for Life 7 said? I didn't see it. You're oh, yes. You're funnier than Raymond, just an FYI. Oh, boy. Oh. You're funnier than Raymond. Let me, let me call Raymond and Let's call tell him. him. Yeah. Let's call him. <laughs> Raymond. There's we've, the guy next to Monica. <laughs> we, we've solved it. Shut up, Weld 195. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Monica, that face. I love you, Monica. Wow. Maybe uh, Monica, that face. Should... I love you, Monica. Which face? Maybe, maybe you should drop when off. Goes like this. Ah, <laughs> uh, Budapest. Philip, you've been to Budapest? No, I haven't been to okay. Budapest or Pest. But that's where his grandparents had their honeymoon. Is that right? Yes. Whose grandparents? My grandparents. Uh, Philip went to Budapest. Our Bach. Wasn't it? What year did they get married? They got married in, I want to say, maybe, maybe. Take your time. 30, 29, <laughs> 1929, maybe. Oh, oh, nine, okay, before, before, <laughs> yeah, way before World War II. Okay, I was going to say. Uh, no, because a lot of family history, but that's a whole other special. We'll Helen, do another. Helen was born in 1933, so they were born probably 1930, between 1930 and 1933. But oh, she okay. <laughs> oh, waiting. Uh, no, she wasn't. Um, Monica, what is the best booze not, Phil brought back for you? Not that there's anything wrong. Yeah, live your life. No. Did you see yes. this? Monica? Monica, what is the best booze Phil brought back for you? Ooh, oh, gosh. I know. But tell me, I like all the booze. The one you drank when the you weren't supposed cherry? to. No. Oh, oh, that wasn't from a show, though. That wasn't from Travels. Oh, right. What was it? I, I found a 50-year-old bottle of port that the man said, you know, you save this for a very special anniversary. So I had put it away. And one day I came home and she was drinking it with her friend over some potato chips and finished the whole thing. With Siobhan Fallon. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. That's and, why we're not married anymore. And what, <laughs> and what kind of potato chips would you indulge with a 50-year-old? Probably a Lay's. <laughs> anything, whatever, whatever's nearby, just anything to go with the very, Somebody very expensive. Uh, Phil, hello. Hello from Rio de Janeiro. This is now, now I feel like I'm doing a telethon almost Ooh. like, okay, we have a. Uh, Gino, professore. I'll, people. I'll remember it. Uh, Thank you. I love you. Diego is a barman. Oh, Celestine. Hi, Celestine. That's my friend from childhood, Celestine. I she had said your, your hair is so long. I had a dream last night. I am not kidding you people. This is my positivity coming through. I had a dream last night that Barack Obama and Michelle Obama 
came with me in my old neighborhood and met everybody on Magnolia Avenue and it was a big party. They love Magnolia Avenue. We're not I, I, getting I, political on this. It's by the way, so, so <laughs> Teresa, Monica, Teresa, who's one of the biggest fans, she just uh, wrote that the statue, and now I, I lost it again, I'm scrolling. Uh, the statue 54. is Capella yes. San Severo, Naples. San in Severo. Capella San Severo, okay. Naples. San Severo. And as phenomenal as that statue, that sculpture, there are two others that I even stick in my mind as well. Like people trapped under rope because it was a fishing, obviously, Naples, it's right? Nice the fishing town. And so they had like fishermen rope, I remember. I love traveling. We're Hi from Delaware. Uh, so here, good, Bella, hello, in Chechnya. Love the episode where Robert remembered what Deborah was wearing and then Amy asked, what was I wearing? Robert said, you were spectacular, spring ensemble. So for those of you, the table read, Monica, you missed the, uh, we were talking about the table read, how great it was, how great you were in that table read and what oh, it's yeah. like that the, 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 yeah. the viewers are getting a chance to see something that nobody in the public ever saw, which was, to see the, uh, the show distilled into just the pure characters acting their hearts out. And that's what they'll see if they go to that Peter Boyle thing on the IMF uh, uh, page. And I think the joy for me was watching Patty and Ray and Phil laughing hysterically. And even Phil told me afterwards, he goes, when Brad, when Robert the character, after Stefania comes on to him and takes her shirt off and he goes, no, <laughs> he's, he, it, it killed, and if you watch it, for those of you who have a chance to watch it, Ray just loses it, Phil loses it, it's just so funny. I mean, all, Brad. Oh my God. Because it's, right. it, yes, the line, we're happy the lines are funny, we're happy the situation is funny, but the way someone says a word can kill you, right? Yes. It's so damn funny, and it's well, just the way. Let me show you a picture of my wife. This is when, how old were you here? Um, it was 1972, so, so I was nine. Okay. I was born in 1962. So this is a special 4th of July photo from my wife. And this is how she celebrated the 4th of July. I'm very patriotic. This is not a joke. Well, it plays backwards or forwards. It's you dressed as a, a red, white, and blue birthday cake? Yes. And, and with a candle. It, and you're it says, it's hard, you can't, it's a little blurry. You have to By the way, matter. it's just it the says, outfit. It says, happy birthday, America. Happy yeah, birthday, no, I think, America. by I, the I, way. But I like the arms are my favorite part. Yeah. Because you I, can't put them down, you can't put them next to your side because you're yeah. wearing a cake. Yeah, I think, how you do you not candle, predict? See the candle head? Yeah, the candle head is awesome. Yeah, my brother's uh, by the way, can you not predict sitcom success in the future by seeing that picture? I mean, <laughs> I, you don't see Meryl Streep in that outfit. <laughs> or, or maybe... Maybe she'd I, be better if she did wear that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I live in Monica's old neighborhood, Beach Avenue. Oh, look at that. Chris, Does that oh, yeah, in Delco. Woo! Delco. Yes. Delco. We just did a fabulous thing for the Delaware County Literacy Council in Delco. Tina Fey showed up, Sherry O'Terry, Delco. Wow. Wow. So here's one thing, Phil, that I think people share about your show. I am procrastinating on watching season four because I'm afraid I will binge it too fast and have to starve again. Need more seasons ASAP. So that's a feeling that I think people have. It brings such joy and then it ends. So the, my recommendation is start again on season one. But has, so does, listen, that's life, right? Everything ends. That's the hard reality. Everything yeah. ends. Phil, uh, uh, Max is. Max is he's great. He's great. He's 94 yeah. years old. He's still together. Now, Phil, what's your secret? Why so skinny when you eat so much? You know how they make a dog food commercial? They don't feed the dog until the commercial. So I don't eat until we film. And so that's why, and I also share every single thing I eat, unless it's a one biter, I share it all with the crew who are looking at me like this <laughs> when I'm filming. So of course I wanna, and then Richard, he doesn't even wait. He just grabs it out of my mouth. Yes. Somebody asked I, me how I like watching you have so much fun without me. 
Oh, really? See, that's the secret to their success. He, I love watching him have fun with them. Oh, see, because I'm that- not to her. No, no, no. That's he, why. Here's the thing. We have so much fun together, and then we also like to do different things. He and a lot of time you come with me. And lots of times I come with me. And what's even more fun, actually, is when he goes and does, does the show in a city. Then he meets all these amazing people. And then I get to go. And then I get to meet them. And he already knows them. And it's, re it's really like having you're, friends and family all over the world. You're, you're a beneficiary of his world travel. Hi, Phil from Northern Ireland. We love, love your show. Love San Francisco was our honeymoon destination. And we res you responded to my message and kindly recommended the ferry building. We loved it. Thank you. That's very nice from Judge Jude Getty. Sorry. Jude Getty in Northern Ireland. I love this, Philip. I love now, it. Uh, how was yeah. that pineapple sandwich in Slide Rio? Down. Be honest. I'll be honest. It was awesome. It's not a pineapple sandwich. They're, it's a pork sandwich, right, with a slice of pineapple in there. Now, I would never think to do this. I don't need pineapple like on pizza and stuff like people like. This pineapple, though, in Brazil is not like what we think of as pineapple. It's just this piece of heaven that is the most juicy, sweet. And so it's like the condiment of the sandwich, which gives it, you know, we need mayo or mustard or something. This is a slice of pineapple, which gives you all that. It's phenomenal. Yes, I, I love it. And I'm sorry, I'm scanning through and people have watched. They're loving it. They want to go back and watch it. Please come to India. Please come to Istanbul. Please come. You know, I mean, the, 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 the list is endless. I'm speeding up because we're going to run out of time. Well, I'm so, um, happy. I'm so happy that everyone's on here. I'm so happy to have you say hi to not just Monica, but to Murray. <laughs> and and yes. to see you, Tom. It's always fun. Uh, yes. We're going to lunch this week, I believe. Uh, I, I would love to do, I'd love, yes, yes. we're gonna, I love doing lunch. I, and, and Monica, sorry, yeah. Monica, you you should, in a, maybe in a couple weeks, come on if you can. I love it. Be, I because- love it. The Monica show, and then I'll come on and ruin her show. <laughs> but you That's come on, fair. come on one minute into it, Phil. Uh, yes, I, <laughs> I, 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 I love it. I, I, I'll look at these, yeah, so people from, uh, okay, Kuala Lumpur. Hi, Phil, from City Girl in Kuala Lumpur. Please come awesome. to Malaysia. Okay. We have so much. Yeah. Please come to Colombia. Uh, I, I want people to know that I do want the show to go on forever, that it's yeah. not really up to me. I'm going to find a way to do it, even if it's on YouTube or something, eventually, if nobody wants it. But... If, if you'd like it to continue on Netflix, you have to talk to them. I, yeah. can't, I have no control. They already know that I want to do it. Some, some people recommended, yeah, please go to YouTube if they say no. And now, uh, while, before I say goodbye, one of the episodes I want to talk about next time is the can opener episode. And yes. I, what are you I, trying I, to start here, Tom? I want to go it's over in- good for the <laughs> moment. So uh, I ruined it. A little, a little, a little, a little teaser for next time. There's an episode called the can opener where Ray gets into an argument with Deborah about a can opener and him opening a can of tuna that happened to Phil and Monica 100%. And so next time, yes. Thank you, Teresa. Yes. The tuna fish episode. Uh, yes. Next time we will talk about that in depth because we'll talk about a, the domestic dispute that caused it but yeah. also how it becomes an episode and then we'll show some pictures from the episode and we hear the marriage can stand this revisitation of that moment <laughs> it saves the marriage that yes I love it. everything is going on in the world if, it, if you can oh. laugh at the end of the day then you know you're healed that's true that's true what a great thing to end on so is she laughing, is she laughing? <laughs> <laughs> um all right uh, how can we help Netflix keep the shows to come? I right. don't know. Watch it. Write them. Uh, Skywriting. Anything to send a signal that you like the show. But watching yeah. will help. By the way, it could. I think the show's doing very well. I think it's a big hit. I'm seeing it on social media. It's, people are thousands, thousands of people writing to me. Uh, so it's going better than ever. But that yes. in today's world, it actually is not enough. For some yes. reason, they, they, you, they, we work for a computer that makes an algorithm, makes a thing. 
I don't know how it works. So if if you if you want to write and say, no matter what you do, Mr. Netflix, <laughs> don't take this show off, or we're going to be very angry. That's yes. Okay. Your show is a breath of happiness in such a difficult year for so many people. I love I love That's from his. Yes. We're keeping everybody in their our prayer. Yes. Yes. All right. I will uh, smile for the camera. This will make a good, Philip, a nice smile, yeah. Great. Uh, and watch Don't the Peter Bo Oh, oh. <laughs> we're still on. Watch the <laughs> Watch excellent use. Fun. Yeah, excellent, excellent use of the camera, much Philip. Better in front of others. Bra Brazil loves you. Uh, uh, we go. Oh yes, just so. I mean, this could go on. This is a great. This is a great thing. So everybody, yes, write to Netflix. Watch the Peter Boyle table read. You'll see Monica and Phil. Go to the I, and give to the Multiple Myeloma Foundation. Foundation, myeloma. yeah. Alex, if you if you go to Google, write Raymond Myeloma, you will see the the table read benefit that we did, and it's free to yes. watch. But of yes. course, see yeah. the, the but, ask for donations if you want. If you want. Yes, and by the way, I'll say this just because I've the, this audience is starting to build. I recommended that Stefania do a portion because. Of all the comments on here about yeah. saying annoying, and so you didn't. Yeah, we you wanted. Still did. I said it in the, do, on the tape on the on the taping even. When yes. she did that scene, annoying. What is this <laughs> annoying? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And yes. So she yes. And so I because so gorgeous and so funny and not a time. Yeah, I, I didn't notice the gorgeous part, but I guess so. The. Uh, the, but my, my whole point to the people watching here is I kept watching the comments before the table read about annoying and her being on. So I thought, oh, that's one good, very small scene with an outside. Because honestly, you could have had, in a good way, could have had Maggie Wheeler, Amy, Amy Aquino, Fred we Stoller. Guest stars. We had, we had uh, best uh, guest. And best Bob, Bob Odenkirk before he was uh, uh, Better Call Saul. Saul. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I um, all right. And Kevin, uh, 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 Kevin, Kevin James. Uh, uh, huh? Kevin James. Kevin James. I remember him. Kevin James. Yes, we had him before he was Kevin James. <laughs> and he wrote an episode. He wrote an what episode. Yes. Are yeah. You, yeah. Uh, all right. Phil, the dance contest coming up. We're going to talk about the can opener and another upcoming thing. There's uh, so much you, to say. Yeah, there's, there's so much to talk about. Meanwhile, uh, I love you for watching. Thank you so Croatia. much. I'll see you uh, on the Netflix. I'll see you in all these locations. Uh, I'm coming to you somehow. All right. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you, Monica. Thank see you guys. You. See you guys Thanks soon. Thanks for marrying me, Monica. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> all right. Bye.